video, I'm going to be building one of the best looking RTX 4090 gaming PCs you can build. I'll be walking you through all the parts that make it possible, including this behemoth Zotac 4090 design, looking at how you put the thing together, whoa, and just how well it performs a little bit later. Let's do this. Rise it on the floor. Yeah. Now let's kick things off, shall we, by talking about some of the parts I'm actually going to be using in today's build. Starting, of course, with none other than our GPU. Now this is the Zotac RTX 4090, specifically with their Amp Extreme Aero Cooler. This is like one of those parcels you get at Christmas as a kid, where you open one layer, and there's another. And you take off that one, and there's another. And all you want is the thing inside, and all I want is this. Heavy graphics card is my initial impression. The back plate's nice. The front, okay. In Interesting. Now, Editor Dan, what do you think? I actually like it in person. I didn't like it when I saw the leaks. I don't like it. Or maybe I, maybe I will when it's in the case. It's definitely different, and I like how the RTX sort of text is here, and it's kind of quite flowy, but the gold is just really weird for me. Right, okay, so RGB may be the saving grace, but I've got to be honest with you, at the minute, I'm just not sure. It's not a bad-looking graphics card. It's just not exactly what I would have gone for. However, that's not really what matters. It's got over 2.5 gigahertz in terms of its core clock speed. It's got 24 gigs of VRAM. And as you saw from my Founders Edition coverage earlier in the week, the 4090 is a monster. It's a very, very, very expensive monster, but a monster nonetheless. DLSS3, spoiler alert, on this is crazy. 250 FPS in Formula 1 at 4K high. Yeah. 400 and something frames per second in Overwatch 2. Yeah. Multiple hundred frames per second in Fortnite. You get the gist. Anything you throw at this, even AAA titles, it's like mincemeat. It's like a speedboat through the River Thames. It's like a graphics card through the valley of hard to run titles that are no longer hard to run. It's an amazing graphics card. And of course, we do need to pair it up as well with a good CPU, which is where, where's it gone? The box I dropped in the intro comes into play. Where the f is it gone? Oh, it's here. It's right in front of me. This comes in. This is the AMD Ryzen 7 7700X. Specifically, it looks a little something like this. Now you'll notice it's got quite a cool design in terms of quite a raised IHS. This can cause some challenges for coolers, so make sure yours is officially compatible and doesn't just fit by chance. Plenty of cores, plenty of threads. The main thing is the class leading single thread performance. The 4090 is so powerful, you need a very, very quick clocked CPU to actually get the good kind of results that this GPU deserves. That doesn't mean that you can only go for a Ryzen 9, it just means whatever you get has to have a decent core count, this does, and relatively high clock speeds. Of course as well, with this being an AMD Ryzen 7000 build, we need to pick ourselves up an X670E motherboard. Top end build, you want a top end board. All the bandwidth, Gen 5 for your SSD and your GPU, great for future proofing. And this board from Asus, their Strix X670E Gaming. It's a bit of a monster, really. Let me go ahead and pull this thing out. And you'll be able to see exactly what I mean. It's got a stunning aesthetic. You've got this nice M.2 heatsink here with plenty of cooling for all of our components. If you look at the rear panel, you've also got two and a half gig ethernet, 20 gigabit USB-C, Wi-Fi 6E, just ticks a lot of boxes. And it's gonna work well for the build I've gone for today. Installing a Ryzen processor in the new sockets is super easy. I will give you guys a bit of detail on it though, as I figured that always helps, especially with it being a new socket design. You want to release the arm and then pull up the socket from the top. So the socket's hinged at the top, the arm is hinged at the bottom. Then drop your Ryzen CPU in with the triangle, yep, in the top left-hand corner of the motherboard, very gently. Give it a bit of a wiggle and pop the cover back down. Leave the black plastic on for now, as we'll be adding in the retention arm. And that's basically it, really. While we're here, we can also pop in our SSD and the RAM. SSD-wise, I've picked up the famous Seagate Firecuda 530. The reason this drive is so great is because you get seven gigabytes per second of read and write. No messing about, perfect SSD. And I'll also be adding in 32 gigabytes of thermal takes tough RAM memory. They have got an RGB kit coming as well that looks very nice. And it does fit in with our theme of the build today. The lack of any RGB on this kit might be a bit disappointing. So feel free to swap this out as you see fit. And I'll link plenty of options for all the components today down at the first links below. This is one of thermal takes latest all-in-ones, their tough liquid ultra. 
there. And it is important you go for a good cooler for Ryzen 7000. The 7700X runs pretty warm. You want a 360mm rad really for any Ryzen build that doesn't use the new i5. This design also has a screen on it, which is pretty cool, though I'm sure at this point every cooler nowadays has a screen. But it is quite nice, compact, good form factor, and will do a great job of keeping our processor nice and chilly, which is what it's all about at the end of the day. I'll be coming back to the actual radiator part of the cooler a bit later, because first I need to consult this very important document. Now if we take a look in here, it's going to give us some instructions for how on earth we install on an AMD platform. In this case, it's super simple. We just need to grab ourselves one of these and then this bag here with the D clips. These are going to pop over the existing plastic brackets on the motherboard. And what that means is that actually, we basically haven't got to do any prep for the cooler at all. Just keep these bits to one side and we don't need anything else from the box, apart from, of course, our long radiator screws, which we'll use to actually install the radiator portion of the cooler. All the rest of the stuff can go back in the box, probably never to be seen again. What we can do at this stage though is get the case sorted. Now when I say PC case I perhaps don't mean it in quite the traditional sense that one might expect when I say PC case. This is more of like a cross between a case and a frame but if there's one thing I can assure you this thing is cool so bear with me. Fun fact I actually had this case on my Amazon wish list for my first ever PC build because they can actually often be wall mounted but my parents at the time told young James no you cannot drill holes in our wall to mount your computer as some sort of photo frame and I cried for weeks. But now, thankfully, I'm an adult and I can make my own decisions, my own stupid decisions. And that is where this comes in today. Obviously, it's not gonna be for everyone, but please bear with me because it's gonna look absolutely awesome. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh yes. Oh. Ah, I definitely opened that the wrong way. Okay, bear with me. This is not something we're used to doing, so I'm gonna lay it all out on the table, put all the parts on the table, and then we'll go from there. Definitely open it the right way around, not like that. I found the instructions. I'm definitely gonna need these. Looking at the diagrams in the manual, I believe this is sort of supposed to clip on a bit like that, and then our glass comes at the front and all the sides build outwards, ish. Some progress has been made. So we've got these things here, and I believe these basically clamp and go through these holes, providing some support. I've also found a couple of screws, which we're gonna use to actually screw in the bottom of the stand. That's these two points just here that look a bit like this into the bottom of the case, and then hope for the best moving forward. Tell you something, it's not lightweight, but it's starting to come together. Look at my handiwork. Now we want to really carefully lower that and through the rear we need to screw it into the bracket. So two holes through these two feet just under the case and then it looks like the sheet of glass will attach to the end of those nice stainless steel metal rods we just popped on. It's getting better actually and I'm more impressed by the moment. You also get included this. Now this is of course our GPU bracket which I believe can either be mounted this way for your standard sort of horizontal GPUs or it can be mounted this way for your vertical card. While I'm here I might also add in our standoffs for the motherboard. We've got an EATX board so we're just going to follow all the holes here labeled a so three along the middle three across the bottom and three down the top get all of those in now it just saves us a step a little bit later on and then once the prep work is done in theory we should just be able to install our motherboard around about here you can see why i've gone for an all black stealthy motherboard design rather than something with like gold accents or otherwise always start with the one in the middle as that's going to get your motherboard locked down and stop it from escaping work your way outwards with one in the top right another in the bottom right and then a further two down the left hand side and one in the middle and that's all we need to do. We're making good progress. There is only one thing left to do before we can install the radiator and that's just add this bracket onto the front. It basically slides onto the two poles but to do that we need to take that top one out and then add it back in. What a well thought out chassis. Tighten that up and it also lets us add just a couple of screws to the top and bottom to stop it from moving. But before that we're going to go ahead and pop in the CPU cooler. Now to make this a bit more interesting I've got Thermaltake's new Swaffer Fans. Now, PC fan innovation is obviously, well, it's a bit non-existent. There's not really much you can do with a PC fan. Although Thermaltake have done a design here where you can swap the blades and flip them to go the other way. Now, this is obviously useful for our build because we can make sure all our fan blades are always facing in the right direction aesthetically. I won't go into it too much in this video. For now, let's go ahead and just pop the radiator in using these new swaf fans. And then we'll also add some extra swaf fans in the front of the case to make sure all juiced up. Then we can add the D brackets over our plastic 
doodads on the CPU, a drop of thermal paste, tighten it in, and that's basically all there is to it. See how quick I did that? I'm speedy. Nice and quick. These things don't take long, do they? Maybe sort of. Anyway, at this stage, we're also just going to tuck away our wires as we go to help with cable management. In a case like this, cable management is arguably even more important than normal, as there's nowhere to hide. I am going to pop the GPU in in just a second. You haven't got to wait long for the 4090 installation and benchmarks in the video. But first, we are missing one last component, and that is the power supply. It's going to install just down the bottom here, and I've got in one of the very first ATX3 units to exist full stop. It comes in from Thermaltake, and it has a steely 1,350 watts. A bit overkill, but who said extra power is a bad thing, especially in a high-end config like this. This thing, though, to be honest with you, with an 80 plus platinum efficiency, could probably power two 3090s if we wanted. Let's pop this in, run all of those cables, and then we can, of course, add in our little 4090. I say little, this thing's huge. Now then, the time has finally come to pop the 4090 in. I mean, come on, guys. Drop a light rated. Have you seen a build this sick before? I mean, maybe you have, but this has got to be up there in at least the top 20 builds you've ever seen. And if we hover the graphics card in, things are about to get even more tasty. So let's go ahead and just pop in a PCI riser cable to the top slot. That is, of course, going to enable us to use our vertical GPU mount. Then we can clip into place the graphics card. Make sure the little retention clip pops up. You don't want to damage the card when you put it in. There we are. Nicely done. And then I think we're going to put it in our not quite frontmost slot but the one just behind that to so go ahead just rest your graphics card that looks a bit precarious but i think it'll be okay and then we're going to remove our three sort of rightmost pci lanes but leave the front one in just for a bit of airflow especially when that glass goes back on in a moment's time take those out oh this is a tense moment then of course we can slide the graphics card in nice and easily add our thumb screws back in a place there we go it's going to sag a little bit naturally for the first one I'm not sure Thermal Take quite anticipated a graphics card this heavy ever being installed like this. So I'm going to cut them some slack for the moment. We might need to add some sort of support bracket in just to minimize any drooping. You see there, it's bending the bracket slightly. It's not bad though, to be honest with you. Like they've done a pretty good job actually of putting that in a good spot. I think literally just a little something to, to heighten it up would be good. With this being of course an ATX3 and PCI Gen 5 power supply, we also have... Where is it? This thing included in the box. This is one of the diddly little cables that comes, of course, with the new 4090 graphics card. Give me a moment. It's a little bit tight. Thermal take that cable could have been marginally longer because it's only just going to reach. And there we have it. That's looking awesome. There's one quick thing I'm going to do before we actually go ahead and power up this PC for the very first time. And that's take off all of our end stoppers on these very cool little stainless steel posts or chrome chrome posts and then we're going to go ahead and pop our side panel on. We're going to close this case up as much as obviously an open case can indeed be closed. You've got these little hinges, little sort of shelves almost. Peel each of the corners back just to pop those little stopper bits in. Do the same on the other side. Same at the top as well. There we go. Pull back the film. Wow. Look at that. Is that not a sight to behold? Oh my goodness. I've got to turn this thing on right now. I can't not boot this thing up. Bear with me. Here we go. Is it going to work first time? I mean, probably not, but God loves a trier. He also loves it when you plug in a power cable. 12 seconds later. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Project Orion. Oh, it's working already. I've not even turned it on. What a cheat. It already says the liquid temperature. Oh, that's amazing. Right, please give me RGB. We've got one, but no others. That's not good at all. What? Is this... Oh, oh. Ah! Is it dodgy? Is it broken? Let's boot it back up again. Editor Dan is, is inspecting my handiwork. Is that in there? Is that meant to be ripped out like that? Oh! Oh, Dan, you're right. Well, hey! Dan, you legend. Thermal take. This is the problem with using Molex in 2022. There! Yes! We've done it! We've only gone and done it! Oh, I think we need to have a fiddle with those Molex cables, make sure they're in a bit nicer, and I'll see you in just a few moments when we test out the performance of our Zotac Gaming RTX 4090. But first, you guys know what's coming next. It's of course time for an awesome montage of this truly one-of-a-kind system that looks, I mean, really like nothing else. Close your eyes. Test out 
about the performance of this graphics card and PC as a whole, we've put it through its paces in a wide range of titles. I'll be working through everything from the new Overwatch 2 and Cyberpunk 2077 update to Apex Legends, Fortnite and Valorant. Let's kick things off shall we with Overwatch 2 first of all. At 4K ultra settings with dynamic render scaling off, running at the full 4K resolution, we pulled in 454 frames per second on average. 90 and 99th percentile results were strong too, and as always, all of our frame rate data was gathered with both NVIDIA FrameView and MSI Afterburner's Reva Tuner. Moving through into Cyberpunk 2077 next, and we first tested at 4K high with DLSS enabled, set to performance mode, and RTX on Ultra. We're specifically using DLSS 2 here. That managed to bring in 91 frames per second, a massive increase over the frame rates typically found in Cyberpunk 2077, but a frame rate that can be pushed even further using NVIDIA's new DLSS 3. It basically adds in their new frame generation technology, and in this instance, we've managed to pull in 142 FPS to be precise. 90 and 99th percentile results were both very good as well, and the game looked awesome. All of the results here tested in the game's inbuilt benchmarking mode. Next up, we tested out Formula 1 2022. Here at 4K on the ultra high preset, we pulled in 229 frames per second on average. The 90 and 99th percentile results were strong too, and the in game benchmark mode provided a repeatable set of results that you guys too can replicate at home if you like. We also tested out Spider-Man at 4K with DLSS enabled and no ray tracing this time. Here we pulled in 142 FPS on average with once again consistent 99 and 90th percentiles which showed a good deviance in those 1% lows that should give a consistent frame rate and a very nice even gaming experience. Apex Legends 4K high, the good results keep rolling in, 202 FPS on average. What really is there to say about Apex? this frame rate at 4K, other than you probably need to spend some money on a nice new gaming monitor. If your gaming monitor is a really, really high refresh rate, 360 hertz or above, our next title, Valorant, is surely the one for you, as at 4K high, it achieved 502 FPS on average. Bearing in mind, for a first-person shooter, 60 to 120 is that ideal minimum range, so 500 more than satisfies the criteria. Talking of criteria and being very satisfied, is this a PC mod video? We also tested out Fortnite. 1080p, competitive, everything set to low, except the render distance, which we pushed to far. 322 FPS on average was the reward for these competitive settings. Awesome results from our 4090, but I'd expect nothing less from NVIDIA's new behemoth of a GPU that absolutely costs a fortune. If you enjoyed this one, make sure to get subscribed. Thanks for tuning in. And as always, we'll see you in the next GeekerWatt video. Or at least I hope we will. Get subscribed and don't miss our next upload.